Hello everyone, welcome to another video. So today I have with me the Bioplay H95 over ear active noise cancelling headphones. These are the latest headphones from Bang & Olufsen to commemorate 95 years of the operation. I will be narrating my whole experience with the Bioplay H95. I will also be making a comparison too with the Sony WH-1000XM3s which I've been using now for like almost two years as my daily driver. Uh, so without wasting time, let's begin. So first of all, you can pick up these headphones in two color variants. You have the black and the mist gray, which I have here with me. Considering Bang & Olufsen is a premium brand, you definitely have to pay that high price tag. These cost $800. Yes, you heard me right. Opening the box, there is a metal case which contains the headphones and all its accessories. This is the first time I'm seeing a pair of headphones that come with a metal case. The metal case is tough and quite heavy. Um, that's the thing you'll notice the first time you pick it up. And upon opening the case, you are greeted with the absolutely gorgeous headphones seated inside. And then there is a flight adapter I don't know anyone who wants to use this, but if you want to use this, it's there for you. And there is a braided 3.5mm audio cable and also a braided USB-C to USB-A cable for charging these up. Obviously, in terms of uh, design and build quality, the Sonys don't come anywhere close to these headphones. They are made of metal all around, so you get a very solid premium build quality. They are quite heavy as well. Uh, they've got some weight. They are heavier than the Sony WH-1000XM3s and XM4s and the Bose NC700 headphones. The headband is padded with this patterned leather and underneath you have this woven fabric material so it's very soft and comfortable. In terms of movement, they swivel slightly and they rotate to an angle of 90 degrees so you can place them around your neck or on a flat surface. And they also fold up which is a first for Bang & Olufsen headphones so you can easily fold them up for easier carriage. The outer parts of the ear cups are made of metal as well. They quite shimmer when you place them on a light source. They pick up fingerprints a little bit, but not that much. Considering how much you are paying for these headphones, the headbands don't really adjust as smooth as I was expecting them to. You have to apply some pressure to adjust the headbands. And when you apply that pressure, the headbands don't really adjust as smooth as I was expecting. The ear pads are not as large as I thought they were going to be considering these are oval in shape. When compared to the Sonys, the Sonys are slightly larger. So if you have big ears, you might find it a little bit difficult wearing these, but they are very soft and comfortable and you can easily detach them like this. As you can see, you can just take them off easily and snap them back in like this. Coming to comfort, these fit pretty well, but obviously once you put on these headphones, definitely you are going to know that they are there. You always feel them, no matter how long you have them on your head. These are not as comfortable as I want them to be. And I think majority of that is due to the headbands being made of metal. So that metal adds to the weight and the hard clamping force. For button placements on the right ear cup, you have your power switch, which is also used as your Bluetooth pairing button. And then you have your 3.5 millimeter auxiliary port. And then you have your USB-C port for charging these up. These use USB-C. And that same USB-C port can be used for wired listening as well, which is really good. And then you have your microphones as well for answering and receiving calls and for the active noise cancellation as well. And then on the top of the right ear cup, you have your touch controls. Yes, these use touch controls. So you can swipe to fast forward and rewind your tracks. One thing I noticed is that when you are using the touch controls, you hear this, you know, whistling sound once you swipe on them. I think it's because of the texture and the material of the metal. Uh, it's very smooth and polished. So each time you swipe, you hear this whistling sound. On that same right ear cup, you have a dial for increasing and reducing your volume. Uh, what I noticed is that the dials shake and wobble a little bit. I guess I have to forgive Bang & Olufsen as this is their first attempt. Hopefully the second generation would be much better, but they work pretty well, no issues whatsoever. And then on the left ear cup, you have your voice assistant button, and then you have your microphones for uh, receiving calls and also for the active noise cancellation. And then you also have another dial as well. This dial is used to switch from active noise cancellation to the ambient mode. And I like the way the headphones transition from the ambient mode to the active noise cancellation. It's very smooth and very satisfying. I really like it. The ambient mode works very well as expected and it picks up sound in the background. Uh, once you turn on the active noise cancellation from my testing, it doesn't really hamper the sound quality. Very minimal hissing in the background. 
and there is no much cabin pressure. Very minimal, you barely notice it. It's like it's not even there. It's very smooth and effective as well. Blocks out a lot of noise, both the high frequency sound and low frequency noise as well. Honestly, these are very close to the Sony WH-1000X M3s. I must applaud Bang & Olufsen. They really did a good job with the active noise cancellation. Call quality on these headphones are pretty good. Uh, my voice was very clear. The other person at the other end could hear me very clearly. But well, they said I was a little bit quiet, but I was clear. I didn't experience any latency on these headphones when listening to music, watching videos and playing games. So that's one thing to take note of. So there is zero latency on these headphones, which is definitely expected considering the price you are paying for them. Coming to audio codecs, these headphones support AAC, SBC and Aptex Adaptive. So when it comes to battery life, you are getting way more than what you get on the Sony's and the Bose NC700. On these headphones, you get up to 38 hours of playtime with active noise cancellation turned on. And then with active noise cancellation turned off, you get up to 50 hours which is really, really great. So for connectivity, you are getting Bluetooth 5.1. You can also connect them to two devices at a time and switch between them seamlessly, which is really good. From my testing, it works very well. Starting with the overall sound signature on the Bioplay H95s, they are very easy to listen to. That's what I noticed. Very easy to listen to. Everything is just subtle. The bass is subtle. The vocals are very clear and crisp. That's what I like about them. Although they can get a little bit, you know, carried away once you crank them up above 70 to 80% volume. Uh, but overall, they still sound very clear, very crisp. And I like the way the bass does not really bleed into the vocals. I did a comparison between these and the Sony's. What I noticed is that when you crank up the Sony's, the vocals, the bass and all the instruments get a little bit mixed up on the Sony's. But on the Bioplay H95s, I noticed that these try really, really hard to separate the vocals from the bass and from all the instruments. You can still hear everything distinctively. While on the Sony's, it's kind of modeled up together. So that's where you really appreciate the capabilities of these headphones. The bass on the Sony sounds slightly muddy when compared to that on the Bioplay H95. So I must applaud Bang & Olufsen. They did a pretty good job. But one thing I noticed is that the upper bass is not really, you know, that boosted. So you don't really get that punch. Uh, but the lower bass is, you know, much more emphasized on these headphones. So if you like hip hop, you might not really like this as you don't really get that punch and thump like the Sony's. Another thing I noticed about these headphones is that they don't get as loud as the Sony's. In order to really get a kick and punch out of these headphones, you have to crank them up to around 50% and above. Uh, while the Sony's at 20 to 30%, you get lots of kick and punch when compared to the Bioplay H95. So that's one thing to take note of. Bear in mind on the app, you have some EQ presets. So if you want a warmer sound, a brighter sound, you can do all of that. But you cannot really fully customize the sound settings of these headphones, uh, which is still a shame in my opinion. I just wish they would make that available. These are great, but are they worth the $800 asking price from Bang & Olufsen? I'll say mm, not really. If these were priced at around $600, that would have been really, really good for what you are getting. I really, really like the way Bang & Olufsen tried very hard to deliver on every aspect of these headphones. Great sound quality, great active noise cancellation, great build quality, great battery life. The only thing is that I was still experiencing the hard clamping force by the side of my ears here. So that's one thing to bear in mind if you're going to be wearing these for long periods of time. As always, I'll be throwing links down in the description section for you all to purchase these headphones if you want. Feel free to check out other reviews and comparisons on this channel. And if you enjoy videos like this, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell icon so that you will be notified each time I post a new video on this channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you all in the next video. Adios.